Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope everyone's doing great. It's been about a month since I uploaded my last video here on the YouTube platform. As always, the fish room has kept me busy. I've suffered some losses, I've picked up some new fish, and I have some fish spawning for me for the very first time. But that's not the purpose of today's video. After a lot of time and consideration, I've reached a very, very difficult decision. And that is to say goodbye to the Red Severums. Stick around and check this out. All right, YouTube, you heard me correct. It is time to say goodbye to these beautiful Red Spot Severums. This wasn't an easy decision, but I've decided to take this tank in an entirely different direction and it was necessary to rehome these fish. And I'll explain that in a little more detail here in just a moment. But before I do, let's just take one last look and enjoy the graceful beauty of these nine inch red spot severums. All right, it's the next day and the red severums are gone. They're in their new home, they're doing great. I should note that everything else is going to be rehomed as well, including the clown loaches, the L114 cactus pleco, the gold nugget, everything's got to go. But I'm really excited about what's coming soon. All right, YouTube, it was a difficult decision getting rid of those red severums. But at the end of the day, my passion in this hobby really lies in breeding, breeding fish, and I especially enjoy the selling of fish, as does the wife. And those red severums, they just weren't producing for me. And the 120 gallon tank is really the only quote unquote large tank that I have. And there's a particular fish that I've been wanting to keep ever since uh, last year's cataclysm event. In fact, my curiosity with this fish uh, came much sooner than Cataclysm, but when I saw these in person, I knew it was a fish that I wanted to try, and I found a source and I am uh, for these fish, and I am actually heading there right now. So I am driving from Minneapolis down to Des Moines, Iowa today. It's about a seven hour round trip, uh, road trip for me today but I'm gonna be picking up nine of these new fish. And uh, what are these? Well, you're gonna to have to stick around to find that out. But it is a beautiful day here in Minnesota, in the Midwest, sunny skies. It's about 60, uh, what is it, 67, 68 degrees right now. No wind, it is just a beautiful spring day, long overdue. And uh, anyways, we'll catch up in a little bit. Once I uh, get these fish, and uh, we'll check them out and then we'll talk about the additional uh, fish that we're going to be adding to the 120 and we'll take you through that and uh, yeah so stick around All right, YouTube, I just crossed the state line back into Minnesota, pulled over at the rest stop that's just across the Minnesota-Iowa border. I can't contain my excitement. I wanna check these fish out. I wanna show you what I ended up picking up. He actually tossed in an extra one, which is always nice, especially 
when you're talking about rare or expensive fish. It's a very nice gesture and uh, definitely not expected. But uh, it still remains an absolutely phenomenal, gorgeous day. It is sunny. It has warmed up to about 75, 76 degrees. But again, I can't contain my excitement. I want to get out of my car. The fish are in the back seat in a cooler. I want to show you what we picked up and disclose the plans for the 120 moving forward, or at least part of the plans. Anyways, let's get out of this car. Let's check these fish out. Let's check this out. I'm not gonna take the bags out of there. I don't wanna don't wanna stress them any more than they need to be stressed, but you can probably tell by the shape of this fish or these fish what they are. These are the pseudohemiodon apothanos, the chameleon whiptail. This is a fish that's kind of been on my radar for a while, but when I saw them down at uh, Cataclysm last September, I definitely knew that these were a fish that I wanted to have in my fish room someday. Now these guys are gonna get about seven to eight inches in size or length. They are called the chameleon whiptails because they do have the ability to change their color based on their temperament and their surroundings. And you'll see that they're pretty dark right now and that's uh, telling me they're they're rather stressed but they absolutely need sand substrate their lip brooders the male will carry the eggs around his uh, lower lip just a really cool unique fish and uh, been wanting to add these for some time so these are going to be one of the fish that we're going to be adding into the 120 as we uh, do something new with that tank Super excited. Anyways, the chameleon whiptail. Now let's get these guys go home. I still have about another hour and a half drive ahead of me, so we're gonna go ahead, pack these guys back up, and uh, get back home. And then we'll start getting them acclimated into the 120, where we'll pick this video up. All right, YouTube, it has been a couple of days, actually. And these 10 chameleon whiptails have acclimated to the 120 without any issue. All 10 are doing great. They've been eating, moving around, doing what chameleon whiptails do. Now these are the Peruvian variant. They will be reaching a maximum size of 7, 8 inches, maybe a little bit larger. We'll see. Right now they're about 3 inches. And I did mention that I wanted, or I will be adding another breeding group of a different type of fish to this tank. But I think I'm gonna let these chameleon whips put on a little more size. They're about three inches from nose to tail, not including that long thread off their tail. I think I want them to be at least four inches before I add the other fish. I'm in no hurry. So I think I'm just going to leave the tank the way it is. It's very plain, very open, but that's what these whiptails like, large open spans of, of sand bottom. So I think they're just going to have this tank to themselves. They're not going to have to compete with any other fish for food, and that's going to give them the maximal, maximum opportunity to grow and thrive. Now I did get rid of all the other fish in this tank with the exception of one bushy nose pleco and he's over here behind my log somewhere. I got rid of my cactus pleco, the clown loaches, my L124, my gold nugget, got rid of everything else that was in this tank. But this tank is going to look completely different in another two to three months once I get the other two groups of fish one more breeding group, and then there's gonna be a large group of dither fish in here. And then we're gonna add some plants since we don't have to worry about the severums eating all the plants now. We can finally add some plants to this tank. It's gonna be minimal, but we'll add some greenery as well. And I think in another two to three months when you see this project complete, I think and I hope you'll all agree that this was a great decision. 
Anyways, let's feed them a little bit of Ebo and maybe get some close-ups uh, of them eating and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, YouTube, tell me what you think about the chameleon whiptails down in the comments section below. Now, keep in mind, this project with the 120, we're just starting. We're going to be adding two other groups of fish in with the chameleon whiptails. We're going to be adding some more structure and some low-maintenance plants. And that tank is going to look completely different in two to three months, trust me. Now, I know there's not a lot of information on chameleon whiptails here on the YouTube platform. And I do hope to change that and I'll be sure to share anything that I learn about these fish in future videos. Now I know I also haven't been doing many updates or fish room tours here at TM Aquatics, but I'll put something out real soon. We've got a lot of things actually going on. While we did suffer some losses, the L260 Queen Arabesque Plecos, they just spawned last night. We have our first trapping, or actually our second trapping with the L397s. Hopefully they spawn for us real soon. We did pick up some new Corydoras, and the Lamprologus Ocelata shell dwellers, well, they're breeding like rabbits. So I'll be sure to put something out real soon, so stay tuned. Anyways, I definitely appreciate each and every one of you taking time out of your day to stop by my channel and watch one of my videos. If you have any comments or questions, again, post them down below, hit the like button on your way out, and if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, and until the next one, we'll catch you all later.